Honors Algebra 2 Precalculus. We're doing 10.8 in Precalc, which is polar graphs. Uh, this is the last video of the section, and I actually meant to do this right after I did the zeros, but I forgot, so it's the last video of the section. Uh, and we'll do example five in it. So we're going to talk about finding the maximum uh, absolute value of R for a polar equation and, and how that's helpful for graphing by hand. I'm not going to make you graph by hand again, but this is helpful if you're graphing by hand uh, to sort of figure out how big, how many rings you need on your graph, etc. Right. So, so let's do a couple of examples. Um, so uh, we're going to call this example five. Right. And uh, actually, before I do that, just a reminder. So as a reminder, um, cosine of theta maxes out at one and has a, a the minimum possible value at negative one, and the same thing is true for sine, right? So essentially, all of what we're going to be doing right here is using these two pieces of information, uh, essentially to uh, so and it's not just cosine theta; cosine of anything maxes out at one and min's out at negative one. So okay, so let's let's walk through this. So in example five. I'm going to have us find, so we're going to find the biggest possible absolute value of r for each of these functions. The first one I'm going to give you is r equals 3 plus 2 cosine of theta. The second one we're going to do is a 5 over a 1 plus sine of 3 theta equals r. Sorry, I forgot my equals r. Uh, the third one we're going to do is... Hmm, Let's do r equals 8 minus 7 sine of, or we'll do cosine of 5 theta. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to walk through these. So here's the premise. What matters in this situation is to recognize that the actual sine or cosine function has the largest possible value. Uh, of 1 and the smallest possible value of negative 1. So so basically to figure out the max we just have to look at the two possibilities. So one possibility is that cosine of theta is as small as possible, meaning negative 1. If that's true, r would be a 3 plus this negative 2, right? Because it'd be 2 times. So my r would be a 1, meaning the absolute value would be a 1. If I picked the other possible, like, most extreme value for cosine, which would be that cosine theta is a 1, I would get r equals 3 plus a 2, which is a 5. So the absolute value of r is a 5. The, the extreme point has to be one of those two largest values of cosine, right? And the reason I can say largest and include the negative uh, is because it's not just because it's an absolute value, but sometimes you're subtracting. So sometimes the larger, largest value you get, like if this had been a minus, the larger value would have actually happened when cosine was negative. Point being, one of those two values has to be the largest possible value of this r. Uh, and it turns out that the absolute value of r is biggest at 5 in this moment. It's at 5. So if I do the same thing going in the other direction, again, the same premise is that we look at the two largest possible values uh, in both directions, like the physically largest and physically smallest. So if, if I were to make my sine of 3 theta, remember it doesn't matter that there's 3 inside, the output of a sine, the biggest it could be is a 1, the smallest is a negative 1. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Hang on, let's not make that a 1. Let's make that a 2 to make myself not have a problem. Sorry, make that a 2. So uh, I get that this is a 5 over 2 minus 1. I didn't mean to give myself a vertical asymptote, which by the way was totally what happened. Uh, okay, so I get that r is 5, which would mean the magnitude of r, or not magnitude, the, well, it is, but the absolute value of r is 5. Uh, if I picked that sine of 3 theta was a positive 1, which is the other possible largest option, I get 5 divided by 2 plus 1, which would be 5 thirds, which is smaller. So again, my largest possible absolute value of r is 5, right? It was an accident that they came out to be 5 both times. Um, in the third one, if I try making my trig function, which is cosine of 5 theta equal to negative 1, right, then my r is going to be an 8 plus a 7, because it's negative 7 times negative 1, so I get a 15. If my r, uh, sorry, if my cosine of 5 theta is a positive 1, which is the other extreme version of it, right, then my r would be an 8 minus a 7, which is a 1. So r, the absolute value of r is 15, would be my largest possible radius. So why this is useful for sketching curves by hand is because it gives you an idea of how many circles you need, right? Because remember, a polar graph is concentric circles. So if I were graphing either of the first two, I would need to make sure my graph had at least five concentric circles so that I could make sure I had enough room to graph. If I were making the horrible mistake of graphing C by hand, I would have to have 15 concentric circles so that I could make sure that as I go outward, I have enough circles to plot my points.